Deep in the Scandinavian mountains, legend says that a gruesome troll known as the Mountain King lies asleep. The only thing that can wake him up is if the princess isn't married by her 18th birthday. Because of this story, King Eric is desperate to find a husband for his daughter Princess Kristen before it's too late. One day, Prince Frederick shows up to ask for Kristen's hand, and impresses everyone with the pompous vocabulary he uses and all the stories about his adventures. Eric decides Kristen will marry Frederick even if she doesn't really want to and gifts the princess a portrait of the prince so she can start falling in love with him. However Kristen still refuses to do as the king says and escapes from the castle in the middle of the night after leaving a knife on the portrait as her only message. Meanwhile Espen is traveling through the forest when he's suddenly hit by Kristen's horse and thrown into the river. When Kristen realizes she's hit something, she walks into the water too and Espen uses the chance to pull her down with him, making Kristen return the favor. Espen is charmed by Kristen's sass and tries to befriend her, but Kristen can't stand Espen's babbling and ignores him until he offers to share the food in his bag. Since she hasn't eaten in a while, Kristen ends up eating everything only to leave after thanking Espen for his kindness. Moments later, Espen returns to his family's farm, where his brothers Per and Pal have been working since dawn doing their chores but also making up for Espen's absence, so they aren't very happy with him. Things get worse when their father informs them that all their crops are ruined thanks to a vulture that came down because Espen didn't put up the scarecrow, and since Espen gave all the things he got at the market to Kristen, they have nothing to eat. The father scolds Espen for not pulling his weight and takes Per and Pal hunting. Espen spends the day alone in the house tending the fire, and in the evening, he hears heavy thumps and growling coming from the forest. Espen assumes it's a troll and starts using the fire poker as a sword as he imagines himself as a hero. This causes a bit of fiery coal to be thrown around the house, which starts a fire. Espen hurries to try to put it off with all the water he has, but the flames spread quickly and there's nothing he can do but watch. In the forest, Kristen continues to make her way out of the kingdom when she suddenly hears the noises as well, it's the mountain king, who finally has come for her. Kristen tries to run away but she's not fast enough and soon she gets captured. The next morning, Per, Pal, and their dad come home to discover the farmhouse has burned down, including the only picture they had of their mother. Espen tries to explain he heard a troll, but they don't believe him, and his father calls him Ash Lad. Their grief is suddenly interrupted by the arrival of Frederick and his men, who want to know if anyone has seen Kristen. Espen hesitates when he says no and Frederick attacks him to demand the truth, so the father comes into his son's defense and explains Espen is just an airhead. When the subject of the troll comes up, Frederick tells them that the king has promised that whoever finds the princess will get her and half of the kingdom. After Frederick and his men leave, the father gives Per and Pal the last of his money and asks them to find the princess to get the reward. Espen wants to help too but his father gives him nothing and kicks him out, asking him not to come back. Espen decides to follow his brothers anyway, and whenever he sees something on the road like a broken mirror or an old helmet, he picks it up, even if his brothers think he's wasting their time. After a few hours of walking, Espen hears some cries for help coming from the woods. Per and Pal ignore it and keep going, but Espen wants to do the right thing and goes to check. He ends up finding a druid that got stuck in a log, so Espen uses her hatchet to break the wood and free her. The druid also says she's hungry after being stuck there for so long, and Espen shares his last potato before explaining he's looking for the princess. The druid informs him that she's already been captured by the mountain king and the only way to kill him is to get the legendary sword TVA gear, which was last seen in a very dangerous marsh. Espen wants to retrieve it, thus the druid gives him a map to the marsh. At first it looks empty, and to make the image appear Espen must ask politely. Espen begins to follow the map to cross the forest and finds Kirsten's brooch on the ground indicating he's going in the right direction, although he doesn't notice he's standing on a footprint left by the troll. When night falls, he makes camp alone and uses the helmet he found to boil some plants. Meanwhile Eric feels incredibly guilty for having caused his daughter to disappear. A messenger suddenly arrives and informs him that they've found Kristen's horse in the woods next to a giant tooth, confirming the troll took her. The next morning, Kristen wakes up to find herself in the troll's cave. The exit is blocked by a heavy boulder she can't move, meaning she can't escape. Back on the road, Per and Pal come across a basket full of golden apples. They decide to take one for each of them, but they're so delicious and addicting that they end up eating them all. At that moment a group of women arrives and asks them to come with them, Per and Pal follow them without realizing they're with nymphs. Nearby, Espen is following the map and gets distracted when he sees the nymphs taking his brothers away. He decides to follow them too, but the path is closed and doesn't open until Espen finds another golden apple and takes a bite. Once he enters the nymph's lair, he finds his brothers eating and having fun with the ladies, but when Espen sits down to eat too, he has weird visions of the food actually looking rotten and the nymphs looking evil. One nymph wants him to eat more apples and Espen realizes that's what put his brothers under the influence, he can still see the truth because he only took a bite. After pretending to eat more to get the nymph off his back, Espen takes his brothers away from the table and slaps them to make them snap out of it. Now Per and Pal can see the truth too and when the monstrous looking nymphs call them back, the boys begin running away. The nymphs chase after them and try to close the path to trap them, but the brothers jump out of the lair just in time before it closes. 
Now they're traveling together again, and the brothers begin arguing over what mythical creatures exist or not, it makes sense not to have seen a troll because sunlight hurts them but it doesn't explain unicorns. Meanwhile in the cave, Kristen is wondering if she could climb her way out of there when suddenly the boulder at the entrance it's moved away. It's the troll, who drops a bunch of animal bones to feed her. Kristen doesn't want to anger him and pretends to eat to please him. Back to the boys, Espen picks up a ball of yarn while Pal discovers this road is near a town, so it's decided they should take a rest. They go to the nearest tavern to fill their bellies, and at another table the waitress is also serving Frederick and his men, who are all extremely rude to her. Espen shows his brothers the map, and this is seen by Frederick's men, causing the prince to immediately come to the brothers' table. Frederick asks for information on the princess because they love each other very much and they have to marry, promising a good reward. Her and Pal are interested in selling the map since they only want the money to rebuild the farm, but Espen points out that if Kristen truly loved Frederick she wouldn't have run away. Frederick gets furious and demands to have the map, Per also thinks they should hand it over. Espen refuses, and when the waitress brings their food, Espen throws the bowl of hot stew at Frederick's face. A furious Frederick orders his soldiers to catch the brothers, triggering a bar fight that everyone in the tavern joins. As various men exchange blows all over the place, Frederick goes after Espen with his sword, and Espen only manages to defend himself, thanks to the waitress passing him a rolling pin. Frederick still hits him and makes him drop the pin, and when Espen tries to grab a spoon instead, Frederick overpowers him on top of a table. As he comes closer, Frederick steps on a plate of food belonging to a burly and now furious man that grabs Frederick and throws him away. The brothers take this chance to run away into the woods, but Frederick and his men follow them until they corner them against the edge of a cliff. Espen pretends to hand in the map, but at the last second he turns around and jumps with his brothers into the water. After swimming for a while, the brothers reach the shore, and Per starts scolding Espen for not taking the money and making an enemy out of a dangerous prince. Per also thinks their family would be happier if Espen didn't exist, and Espen responds by starting a fight. Pal immediately separates them, and Per takes the map before going back to the road. Even after the insults Espen continues to follow his brothers, only stopping to pick up a bare skin. Meanwhile the troll comes to pick Kristen up to get married. Kristen tries to defend herself with a piece of bone, but this does nothing, so she uses her words instead and points out that there can't be a wedding if she doesn't have a pretty dress. This successfully makes the troll drop her and leave for a while. Eventually the brothers make it to the marsh, where they get surrounded by a heavy fog. Espen gets his boot stuck in the mud, but Per and Pal don't see it and keep going until they get lost. Fear takes over them when they start hearing weird noises that turn out to be Frederick and his men, who finally capture the pair. Frederick wants Espen as well, but Per says he's dead to protect him. In the meantime, Espen continues to wander around until he comes across the lake he had seen on the map. He jumps into the water without noticing the moss creature swimming around, and at the bottom, Espen quickly finds the legendary sword. The creatures attack him as soon as he grabs it, but after some struggling underwater, Espen resurfaces victoriously. A few hours later, Frederick's group has left the marsh thanks to the map they took from Per and they stop to relieve themselves in the forest. Per decides to try to escape and throws some dirt at the guard to distract him, then he runs to grab a horse, but the horse doesn't obey him and Per is captured again. Espen also manages to leave the marsh and after testing his sword on a tree to see how sharp it is, he makes a plan to save his brothers. Frederick and most of his men start yelling when they suddenly see a bear coming after them, but the burly guard stops the beast to prove it's just Espen wearing the bear skin. Now Espen gets captured too and Frederick keeps the sword, but he doesn't kill the brothers yet. He wants to use them as bait when they make it to the troll's cave, and if Kristen doesn't cooperate when they find her, then she'll die too. The group continues to travel, only stopping to make camp at night. The brothers are tied to a tree and Pal asks to be fed, but the men throw the food out of their reach just to see them struggle. Suddenly a deep growling can be heard from the woods, it's the troll coming for them. Frederick and his men run away but the brothers are left behind. Fortunately there's a rock near them that they manage to pick up and use to cut the ropes right before the troll tears off the tree. Espen and Per immediately run away, but Pal first stops to pick up the food. The three of them find a spot to hide together, but when Per discovers Pal has brought the food with him, he throws it out to stop the troll from finding them by the smell. The food bounces on a bunch of trees and rocks and ends up falling next to them anyway. Frederick orders two of his men to fight the troll while he escapes, but this only ends with the troll killing them both. The prince hides by climbing to the top of a tree, and when the last of his men tries to join him, Frederick pushes him away to feed him to the troll. This isn't enough for the troll to leave and he begins shaking the tree to catch the prince. Minutes later, the brothers only hear silence and wonder if they can come out now. However the troll finds them, thanks to the smell of the food and kidnaps Pal before finally leaving. When the troll returns to his cave, he throws Pal and Frederick with Kristen, who isn't impressed at how bad the prince is at rescuing anyone. Frederick tries to tell her this is part of his plan, but Pal points out that heard him say he would kill Kristen if necessary. Furious, Kristen knocks Frederick out with a bone, and when she's about to do the same to Pal, he explains he's just a farmer and tells her all about his life. Hearing Espen's name gives Kristen a bit of hope. 
Back to the boys, Espen begins crying because he thinks losing Pal was his fault. Her comes through and finally admits that while he does complain a lot about Espen, he's also capable of extraordinary things nobody else can and he should never stop dreaming. Afterward the brothers search the forest to see what got dropped during the chase and fortunately they find the legendary sword in Espen's bag. There's also a bunch of fireflies around, so they catch them in a jar with honey. Then Per and Espen leave the forest to finally make their way to the Mountain King's lair, using the fireflies in the jar as their lantern. The place is filled with human bones and shaped almost like a labyrinth, so Espen takes out the yarn he picked up earlier and uses it to mark the way as they go. After some exploring, Espen steps into a hole but doesn't fall thanks to the sword getting stuck, and to his surprise, this hole is connected to the cave with the prisoners. Using a rope, Per and Espen pull Pal, Kristen, and even Frederick out of the cave, but on their way out, they find the troll blocking the way while napping with the wedding dress. To escape safely they must jump over his tail, and Kristen and the brothers do it successfully, but Frederick's an idiot that trips and ends up waking the troll up. The group immediately begins running out of the cave and they consider going down the mountain, but the troll will most likely catch up to them, so Kristen points out that they should climb up because the sun is about to raise and they can use it in their favor. The mountain king begins chasing them up and Frederick almost falls, but Espen can't help being kind and helps him. Even then Frederick is still a twat and decides to hide in a hole under some rocks instead of helping the others fight. The troll catches up to them on top of the mountain, so Espen takes out his sword to confront him. He barely gets to hit the troll on the ankle before the troll easily pushes him away, causing the sword to fall off the edge. Her goes after the beast next by throwing rocks at it, but the troll hits him too and knocks him out. Pal cries over his brother's body and asks Espen for revenge, Espen notices the sun is almost out and tells Kristen to distract the troll while he thinks of something. Kristen makes the troll chase after her while Espen looks through his bag and finds the broken mirror, which he quickly raises to make the sunlight bounce on it and burn the troll. The Mountain King's body immediately freezes as his body becomes rock. Then Espen and Pal check on Per, who suddenly wakes up because he's alive after all. While the siblings celebrate, Kristen hits the troll's body, making it crumble. Frederick goes down the mountain alone and reaches the forest, where he comes across the druid and calls her ugly. In revenge, the druid gives him the wrong directions to go to town. Sometime later, Eric's surprised to receive the visit of the three brothers, and with them, their daughter. After the family reunites, Eric hesitates because he knows he promised Kristen's hand to her rescuer, but he doesn't want to anger her again. Espen saves him by explaining they only want money to rebuild their farm and Eric accepts, then he informs Kristen she can marry when she wants and who she wants. Afterward, the brothers return home. The father hugs Per and Pal while Espen stays back, thinking he isn't welcome, but his dad hugs him too and the two of them apologize to each other. Espen hands him the money and Per explains they got it, thanks to Espen, so the father tells him his mother would be proud of him. He also apologizes for calling Espen Ash Lad but Espen decides to keep the nickname. Some weeks later, the farm's getting back together little by little. Kristen's comes to visit Espen regularly, and they often leave to have dates. Meanwhile in the forest, Frederick is still lost and when he finds a golden apple, he becomes the nymph's next victim. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this.